out to blow. Yellowstone is a supervolcano, one of the few in the world. Scientists warn that this supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park is on the brink of erupting after 878 earthquakes struck the area in the last two weeks. This is an article dated today, July 9th. Since June 12th, an unusually high number of quakes were recorded around Yellowstone with one at the 4.4 magnitude. The quakes represent the highest number recorded in such a short space of time in five years. Uh, the last time something like this happened was back in 2014 and that spurred the United States to enter an agreement with countries that would be able to accept Yellowstone refugees. And the United States has been paying tens of billions of dollars for a 10-year contract that expires in 2024 for countries in the Southern Hemisphere to take in uh, Yellowstone refugees. The thing is, who is on this list of Yellowstone refugees? If you live in the area, have you been told that you will be evacuated? I'd like to know. If you are in the area, please let me know. I have no idea who is on this list. Now, since June 12th, we said, they've had a huge number of quakes, one, at least one at 4.4 magnitude, and that's worrisome. Natural News reports, although the risk of eruption remains low overall and the volcano alert level has not been raised from green, it is believed that if it does erupt, it could be 1,000 times as powerful as the one at Mount St. Helens that took place in 1980, a thousand times more powerful. This particular volcano, Yellowstone, has been dormant for more than 70,000 years, but that does not mean it will not erupt again eventually. It's impossible to predict when that might occur, but seismic activity can signal a potential eruption. Four years ago, researchers discovered that the underground magma chamber of the volcano was more than twice as big as they believed, encompassing an area of land that measures 56 by 19 miles. So the magma chamber is at least twice as big as what they thought. Huge ash cloud could devastate the western United States. Should the volcano erupt, the resultant ash, smoke and lava would most likely cause widespread devastation in this country and also have an effect on the rest of the world and immediately, of course, in Mexico and Canada. It's believed that an eruption there would see molten lava hotter than a thousand degrees, but the biggest concern is the ash. Scientists believe it could emit ash that extends over 500 miles, stretching from California all the way to Texas and Louisiana. It would likely leave as many as four inches of gray ash on the ground, destroying Midwestern crops. It could also spew out gases like sulfur dioxide, creating acid rain and leading to global cooling by reflecting the sun from the earth. While it might not wipe out human life entirely, it would certainly create a lot of damage across the western side of our nation. Another concern in that part of the country is a gigantic well of molten carbon that was discovered under the park earlier this year, just this year. And this year, we're only in the sixth month. Yes, a gigantic well of molten carbon was discovered, spanning 700,000 square miles. This section of upper mantle is about the size of Mexico, and it creates specific seismic patterns as solid carbonates melt. If a significant amount of the gases in this deposit are suddenly released into our atmosphere, it could spur an environmental disaster akin to a nuclear warfare. So this is uh, terrible. This is new discoveries happening that happened about six months ago. As for Yellowstone supervolcano, it has only had three major eruptions in the last two million years. Three major eruptions in two million years. Geologists say that other signs would also likely occur if the volcano was on the verge of blowing, such as big changes in the surface deformation, gas output, and the hydrothermal system. Well, the surface deformation has occurred. Even though this latest round of earthquakes will likely and hopefully amount to nothing, just like similar earthquake swarms in the past, 
the news serves as a reminder that it never hurts to prepare for events like this one, waiting for more signs of impending doom, where whether it's a volcano or another type of threat will place you in competition with other people for scarce resources. So the time to start stocking up and making a plan is now. Stone super volcano ready to blow. Well, that's that's exactly what we're hearing. Uh, reports now amid the growing swarm of earthquakes. Now over 1,000 earthquakes in the last month at Yellowstone National Park. Now we know there was a 4.6 earthquake that hit right there at the uh, uh, right there in the center of it, right there where the super volcano is. Uh, about a month ago, and then we just had 5.8 earthquake hit Lincoln, Montana, so which is all part of the danger zone. Okay, we just had that this week. So Montana's largest earthquake ever. Scientists are now growing increasingly concerned that the so-called super volcano at the heart of Yellowstone National Park could be building toward a Category Seven eruptions so what is a super volcano you may ask what does its explosion mean for life on planet earth well i can tell you it would be catastrophic it'd be cataclysmic apocalyptic of a biblical proportion there's no question about it it would pretty well put an end to life for the most part in north um, and central and south america our side of the hemisphere is this thing going to blow before Jesus returns? I don't know. Could it be a part of uh, the effects of the gravitational pull that we may be going to experience on this planet from planet X or Nibiru when it comes closer, this binary system that's pulling up, seemingly something shaking the heavens and could be trying to pull the earth apart. We're breaking records in volcanoes, breaking records in earthquakes, breaking records in sinkholes we're having all kinds of extreme weather conditions global changes that are taking place that are affecting uh mudslides landslides flash flooding all kinds of thunderbolts of lightning and and we're we're just witnessing one event after another the sun is hotter than it's ever been before the radiation levels in california in the last two years have went up 13 percent in the Northeast, 19%. And the earth seems to be shaking and quaking. It's almost like the, it's, it, the wobbling on the, uh, uh, on the poles. And so we're watching all of these apocalyptic signs, realizing that every bit of it is leading us ever so closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we're in a heat wave. It's almost like a heat dome that has brought uh, unbelievable suffering in Iran. It hit 129.2 degrees Fahrenheit with a heat index of a record 162 degrees. You could fry an egg. Oh, no, no. You could fry an omelet and the bacon and maybe even, I don't know what all. I mean, are you serious? This is unbelievably hot. And it's happening in Southern California. 10,000 cattle have died from the excessive heat. Oh, and what about Nevada and, and 119 degrees in Las Vegas and 120 degrees in Tucson, Arizona and, and Mexico, it's cooking down there. Are you serious? So we're, we're, we're looking and we're witnessing and we're understanding that the UV rays, the, the, uh, uh, the cosmic rate, the gamma rays, all that's affecting the earth. You've got to understand the magma's moving in the molten uh, magma. The lava is all in the core of the earth, heating up from some type of intense uh, gravitational pull that uh, even scientists say that there's an 8% tilt. The entire universe, the entire universe we're in has tilted 8%. So, I mean, there's something biblical going on here with the signs of the second coming of Christ and all of the apocalyptic events going on on this planet are coinciding with the apocalyptic event. It's like whatever's going on in the spiritual world is manifesting in the physical. And there's signs in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. 
then the earth is going to soon have a solar eclipse of a biblical proportion where the sky will turn as dark as sackcloth of hair, as it says in the book of Joel. That's coming up August the 21st. 33 days later, we're going to have the great constellational alignment in the heavens. It has never happened before, nor will ever happen again, but is, is explained to you in detail from a prophecy that's 2,000 years old by the prophet John, uh, the Apostle John, in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. It's all coming together. We're, we're in the last days. Yeah.